Hi all, got a quick guide for Vengeance Demon Hunter for both Mythic Plus and Raid, but mainly Mythic Plus for Season 4. Been playing mine a lot, sitting around 2.7 KIO. Vengeance is insanely fun, not just because it's definitely the best tank in the season right now, but holy shit, it's just so nice to have so much self-sustain, great mobility, and fantastic control over mobs with your sigils and CCs. Not to mention, but Vengeance has some, of, some very, very solid damage and healing. If you're looking for a tank to easily get some rating on or if you're sick and tired of waiting to get into keys for hours then definitely try it out especially if you've always wanted to try it and never have now is a great time here's a quick guide for those of you new to vengeance or just need an updated guide for this season i'll cover stat priority bis trinkets enchants rotation talents and i'll have timestamps down below if you want to jump to a specific section let's get into it for stat priority we're going to want to always focus on eye level or an agility first definitely then we're going to go for haste crit, versatility, and then mastery. Crit and haste are our biggest priority with stats. Crit increasing the effectiveness of our attacks and heals is huge for Mythic Plus and rating it's so good. And haste is OP with faster attack and spell speed. For enchants, for your main hand, you're definitely going to want to get Sophic Devotion. And if you can get your hands on Thorncaller Claw, maybe with Bullions, I'd highly recommend it. It's fantastic. For your offhand, you're going to want Wafting Devotion. For your rings, Devotion of Haste or Devotion of Critical Strike, whichever one you need most. Back, Regenerative Leech. Wrist, Devotion of Leech. Chest, Waking Stats. And then your legs, Fierce Armor Kit. All right, talents, I got a few builds for you guys. Uh, two for Mythic Plus, they're just fantastic. One's for a general build. It's really well-rounded. I love it. I've used it mostly in Mythic Plus, and the other one's for pushing some higher keys, or if you're a little undergeared, uh, it can be really nice to have. And then one for Raid. I'm not going to go super in-depth with these builds. Um, I'm just going to cover some choice nodes that it's important to have, I think, that's worth mentioning. Hopefully, I don't miss anything. If I do, let me know down in the comments below. I'll have links to these builds, too, in the description below of the video, too, so feel free to check them out and import them yourself. Over here on the Demon Hunter side, um, there's not a lot I mentioned here. I take Imprison for Incorporeal, or if I really want to inca incapacitate a mod and I don't have maybe a Silence, Interrupt, anything like that, um, and I can quickly CC them, that's actually really helpful, especially when you you're pugging, which is mostly what I do. Um, it, it, it's just really nice to have. Sigil of Misery, obviously, is just fantastic. Chaos Nova, Fellblade, great for damage and generating fury when need be. Uh, Darkness is a super OP uh, ability. Like, absolutely insane uh chance to avoid damage increase 100 percent when you're not in a raid so this is just really good but basically just grants a friendly target a chance to avoid all damage from an attack last eight seconds uh it's also can be really good to uh have this as well pitch black reduces the cooldown of a darkness of 120 seconds so it's a three minute cooldown instead of a five minute cooldown it can be really helpful especially if you're pushing content uh really like it hunt great damage cd especially for single target really good we even heal off of it too it's fantastic and elysian decree for mythic plus for sure is is so nice great damage increase uh, also, we get soul fragments from it, which is just fantastic. Uh, overall, this build is so good on this side. There's not a lot of mention here. I would generally run this for Mythic Plus. I might, I might grab Pitch Black if I need to, or possibly even prove Sigil of Misery. Uh, can be nice if you feel like you need to. I don't think I need that. I need that most of the time, especially when I'm pushing a little bit higher keys, 11, 12s. Uh, it's been really nice. A lot of people are CCing as well, but you have, already have Sigil of Science. You have Sigil of Change with this build, um, and you have Chaos Nova. So you have a lot of CC in first place, so it's really nice. to. You don't really need it, but you can if you want. Uh, over here on the right side. So uh, there's a lot of little choice nodes that you can change throughout this. What I found that this build is just really freaking good. Uh, it's really well-rounded. Uh, as you can see, we'll cover another build here in a second, but we're not using Cheat Death here. We're actually going over here to focus Cleave vulnerability and soul crush um this makes it so our frailty might overlap um it also makes it so soul cleave applies frailty to our main target and also increases the damage we deal to these afflicted uh targets by four percent which is really nice it's a good damage increase overall uh but the biggest thing here to mention is illuminated sigils sigils have one additional charge you basically have to run that you don't have to i mean but you definitely highly encourage and you should this is absolutely fantastic this is why vengeance demon hunter is just so unbelievably op sure we have great damage sure we have great survivability and obviously healing uh which is amazing but uh it's mainly just for the crowd control that's why we're so good right now it's absolutely insane we have two charges of sigil of silence sigil of misery 
Sigil of Chains. We've got Sigil of Flame. It is so freaking good. Uh, you can see here too, you have 15% increased chance to parry attacks from enemies affected by our Sigil of Flame. That's why we're using it on pull. Just super important to have. And then the other key thing to mention here is Sigil of Chains. I, I really recommend running this. There's a couple builds I've seen out there that aren't running this, uh, especially if you're in like more of a mid-end, low-end content side uh, sort of thing. It's just nice to have. Guys, you're slowing them. You're pulling targets literally towards that group. It is so fantastic for grouping targets together. You can use it as an interrupt tool as well. It's just, it's, it's, I would highly recommend using it in every, every chance you can. Uh, it's probably my most used sigil other than sigil of flame it's just really good so overall this is the build though there's not more hi highlight here i would generally run this most of the time if you're pushing some keys though there's some talents here that we change uh and we we opt for cheat death this can be really nice to have so basically if you're going to sustain fatal damage you have a cheat death it can only occur once every eight minutes uh but transforms you into meta so it's just a, basically another time to have meta it can be really helpful, especially if you feel like you're dying on pull. Maybe you're under geared for the keys that you're pushing. Uh, generally, if you're Demon Hunter, like right now, uh, I think I'm, I'm, I'm at, you know, 514 iron level, which is incredibly low, but I'm doing, you know, 10s, 11s, uh, a couple 12s uh, that didn't time. But overall, it's worked really freaking well. Um, this can be this can be great uh, to have. But again, especially if you're pushing, if you're pushing, uh, keys, it's really good. Also, uh, cycle of binding, if, uh, afflicting an enemy with the sigil reduces the cooldown of your sigils by two seconds. Just really nice to get more sigil uptime. Again, it's not usually a problem, uh, but it is nice to have. And then we're taking Dark Lair Boon. When Fell Devastation finishes fully channeling, super important to mention, fully channeling, it refreshes 40% of its cooldown and refunds 20 to 40 Fury. A lot of people just cancel before it fully channels. That's super important to have. But this is a great build, Super Mythic Plus. These are the general builds that we're running. Even over here, you can see that I took Pitch Black for this build since I'm pushing higher keys. But again, you could remove this and you could grab Sigil of Misery if you think that's more beneficial for you. Uh, so overall, those are our two Mythic Plus builds. Like I said, I'll have links down below. And then our raid build is this. Uh, not a lot changes. We ch change a lot of these stuff over to our main, the main build, the Soul Crusher build here for this. But as you can see over here, we're getting rid of a Listening Decree. And then we're taking uh, Erratic Fell Heart and Collective Anguish. Just a great damage increase. It's uh, super comfortable to use. Again, I've only done Normal and Heroic. I uh, haven't done any Mythic or anything like this. But there's not a lot to mention here. Again, like I said, most of it's the same. Uh, for this but obviously you're not taking sigil of chains we're not taking in prison there's no reason to take either one of those you don't really need to listen to decree unless you're maybe in an aoe fight or a scenario but collective anguish is just really nice to have good damage increase uh yeah but that's it. that's it for the builds again if you guys have any questions let me know down in the comments below our general rotation works for both mythic plus and raid we're going to start off with sigil of flame then you use infernal strike with meta try to use meta on cd or as much as you can but hold it if you need to defensively then you're going to use fiery brand this spreads with burning alive this is a great damage and threat and survivability increase for us especially in aoe so make sure you're using this as much as you can then we're going to use immolation aura fell blade fracture and then soul cleave for single target or spirit bomb if you have two or more targets and have four plus souls for both trinket if you have one then you're going to use the hunt use this on cd and if you can uh, when you have at least three stacks of frailty on the target you're hunting next you're going to use the listening decree again use this on cd Fell Devastation, same thing, use it on CD, but if you need to use it defensively, do that instead. This rotation, like I said, doesn't really change for raid, but save it defensive for mechanic if you need to. And if you have one target, use Soul Cleave, and if you have two or more, use Spirit Bomb. Final notes, basically for your rotation though, pop CDs whenever you have available, unless you need Meta, Fell Devastation, or Fiery Brand for a difficult upcoming pull. Frailty is a huge part of Vengeance, is, and it's vital to surviving and putting out more damage. This is caused by consuming your soul fragments in your basic rotation. So many tanks don't realize how insanely OP your Sigil of Flame is. I see this all the time. You should be using this constantly. Never have two charges of Sigil of Flame, and usually use it on pull. Because of our tier set, increases our damage, healing, and stamina. Our best in slot trinkets consists of Fire Axe Tainted Heart. This thing is insane, by the way. Augury of the Primal Flame, Prophetic Stone Scales, and Manic Grief Torch. Other decent options are Tree Mouth, Festering Splinter, and Enduring Dread Plate. Uh, preference kind of depends on if you're pushing keys and need survivability or you want to push out more damage. Add-ons and resources I'd recommend using. Uh, it's kind of what I mentioned in every single video, but that's just because it matters quite a bit. I use Weak Auras on Curse Forge. It's absolutely fantastic. You can see it in the middle of my screen. Uh, you can grab the one I'm using on, on Wago.io, and it's Luckthos's Deep Demon Hunter Weak Aura. It's clean. It's easy to understand. Helps manage your fury. Demon Spike Uptime, CDs. Show you all the information you need on the middle of the screen. I'll have the link down in the description below, too, that you can just 
grab from there. Uh, I also recommend getting details for tracking damage, interrupts, which is crazy important for tanking, healing done, how you die, and just a bunch of other info, and then deadly boss mods or DBM to yell at you to get out of shit or when you need to do certain mechanics, it can be really helpful, and it's great for learning new dungeons. Vengeance is in an amazing spot right now, and I'm sure you already know that, but it's incredibly fun. I hope this video helped you guys out so you can jump into whatever keys you want or need to. If you have any questions, though, leave them down in the comments below, or feel free to stop by over on Twitch and ask me there. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.